Ugh. I don't know about all of you, but I've got like 25 different things around the house that I've been trying to fix with 3D printing. And for whatever reason, I haven't been able to get my 3D modeling just right. Now, last time that I looked into 3D scanners, you guys gave me the feedback that I really should have tried printing out some of the stuff that I was scanning. So recently I got sent this brand new scanner, the latest greatest from 3D Maker Pro. It's called the Mole. And I thought that we would just try and get some of these projects to actually print out and see if maybe this latest greatest 3D scanner is good enough that it can succeed where my beginner 3D modeling failed. Let's find out. So the first thing that we need to fix is this funky looking clasp that actually goes to my son's stroller. And everyone in his daycare all has the same problem where this clasp has broken. We now have both of them broken on the right and the left. Now I have been trying to model this out in Onshape with my lackluster skills. And I think I'm on prototype number 15 and it still doesn't quite close correctly. Now this is a really cool and unique challenge for a 3D scanner for a couple of reasons. Number one, it's a black object, which 3D Maker Pro claims and many other 3D scanners claim that they can handle. And number two, it's got a lot of interesting inner detail. This scanner I think is supposed to handle like 0.05 millimeter accuracy, but let's see if it can get in all those little nooks and crannies uh, and actually scan. So I'm gonna go ahead and get us into this program and I'll power up my little turntable here and uh, let's give it a try. You can see I already have sprayed this because I've tried this a couple times in less than ideal conditions, but uh, let's find out. First things first, we'll do table scan, preview. Now this is the same software that I hated when I tested out the CR scan lizard, at least it looks the same. But in this instance, it has all kinds of tutorials and seems to be a lot better thought out and improved over when I tested it with the CR scan lizard. So I'm uh, optimistic, cautiously optimistic. We'll just do our initial scan here so it can scan the turntable. And uh, let's put this black object on and see what it comes up with. I'm gonna crank up the sensitivity and see if that can pick it up. It actually seems to be doing a really nice job. That looks pretty good. Okay, that's our first scan done. Obviously not super impressive, but let's uh, go ahead and try another scan from the opposite angle. And we'll just append that and scan. Oh, wow. Um, so that's a big mess. And I know there's some way to turn on NIR, near infrared recognition or something, but I don't actually know how to turn it on. So instead of doing that, I'm just gonna crack out this uh, sublimating spray that I got from ATT Blime, same stuff that I used in the last video, cause I don't, know how to turn on the NIR. They say that you can turn it on, but I think it's just gonna be easier and we're gonna get better results if we just spray. Let's hit a preview. We're gonna do an initial scan. And uh, let's just give this a quick spray. That seems to be a whole lot better. Okay, so we now have three different scans from different angles. I think I might just do one more and then we'll see what we come up with. It's looking really good. I mean, it's capturing, looks like it's capturing all the details. And then when it goes to rebuild, I'm getting a lot of like noise. See what I mean? Lots of noise. But hey, I mean, dimensionally, it looks like it's really accurate. I wonder if we take all of these, is it actually gonna be able to merge them? Because my one of my main criticisms of this software before was that it uh, didn't merge things correctly. So let's see if it aligns. All right, let's see. 
Uh, yeah, that does not look good at all. If the alignment result is not ideal, please select only two scans. Okay, so let's select two good scans. That looks like a pretty good scan, right? Lots of details there. A few moments later. I mean, that looks pretty good. Now let's see what happens when we process it. While it's pulling that up, we can pull up the one that I made in, this is the right side of what I made in Onshape and see, you know, obviously very crisp lines, but my dimensions somewhere are off. There are my two designs from Onshape. Okay, it's taking quite some time. So here's the result. Uh, some of the parts look amazing. I mean, this angle, it even got the part where it's cracked. That looks great. But then I have all these, like, all this phantom geometry that shouldn't be there at all. And I mean, I guess I could use parts of this, but I'm going to end up spending way more time trying to fix this in Blender than just modeling mine from scratch. So I'm going to call this small functional part a fail uh, and go back to my model that I generated in Onshape and try and figure out exactly what's wrong and where my dimensions are slightly off. I guess I could pull this in to Onshape and use it to try and reference, but just, I mean, all this like messy geometry, it's just, I think this is just too detailed of a part or I don't know what I'm doing with the scanner, which is also entirely possible. Let's try the next thing. All right, our next order of business is a heartbreaking one. It is this statue, which was a wedding gift from my entire team in the Philippines. I'm really sorry, guys, but when I moved into this apartment, the movers were a little rough with the boxes and or I was not good at packing and they broke my wife's neck and scuffed up her beautiful face. And I love this wedding gift. It's like probably one of the most thoughtful, sweet wedding gifts with the logo of my old business and everything. So I've really been wanting to fix this. And now that I have printers that can handle multiple colors, I wanna see if I can fix this and print a new one out of PLA, which is gonna be really strong. Let's see if we can scan it. And let's turn on texture mode because I'd love to get some of that color information. All right, it's flashing and strobing. You know, I'm thinking maybe the easy scan mode is gonna be better for this without the turntable. Yeah, let's just use the easy scan mode. Let's try scanning. So we got this, let's hit scan. Well, the alignment seems to be working because it's now realigned itself. Okay, let's go down and get those legs up next. I think my brightness is too high. It seems to be making quite a mess, but I'm wondering if it's gonna clean itself up. Like the more information I give it, maybe it'll fix the mistakes and the double of my nose. Now this thing apparently has like anti-vibration. So even if you're not holding it still, it's supposed to be able to figure out and fix things. What I'm worried about is like, it seems to be that there's like a shadow, like I'm duplicated. The face has the same features twice. Let's get the tops of the heads. Getting the tops of the heads is proving very difficult. Okay, I'd like for my bride to have a head. I'm just saying. This definitely takes a lot of skill and patience. Okay, I think part of it is I can't see the preview because the camera's blocking it. Here we go. Now, let's get the tops of those heads. Okay, it keeps losing tracking every time I get to the tops of the heads. I'm unplugging the turntable. Let's try to get this going. There we go. Now, oh, maybe it's because my wife has black hair. Ha <laughs> My wife has black hair. That's why. Sorry, honey.
Okay, so, so far, black objects are a no-go. Now, ha there we go. All right. Wifey has hair. I love you, sweetie. I love your beautiful black hair. All right. That's more like it. Yeah, that really helps, that sublimating spray. All right, I think that's enough for now. Now let's see what our model looks like. Okay. Rebuilding, rebuilding, rebuilding. Okay, I had really high hopes, uh, but they were pretty quickly dashed. Uh, it looks like I'm missing all kinds of data here. Uh, it took like 20 minutes to process all these points. Um, let's see what happens when we process it if we get a usable STL. I'm not optimistic, <laughs> I'm afraid. Okay guys, moment of truth. We have uh, an OBJ or STL. Let's save it in STL. Uh, I'm pretty excited. Let's just see uh, how it looks. Wow. That's actually really impressive. Um, obviously, I missed some spots in scanning and I'm gonna have to do some cleanup work in Fusion. Okay, so a couple days have passed, a little bit older, a little bit wiser. Maybe this is a matter of user error and not the scanner or the software. So I watched a few tutorials on YouTube of all places, and are you guys ready to see the results I came up with? Bam, look at this. It's not perfect, and the repair work, you know, has to be done, but I've managed to get textures in there. I did do some things wrong, so there are some artifacts in here uh, that need to be fixed. That's my fault because I used table scan instead of, doesn't matter. The point is, wow, look at this detail 3D scan. And actually, this is not the only one that I have. I also took this part, which is a part of a water bottle, which my wife and I keep breaking and we have to order the entire lid again for these flip up water bottles. I 3D scanned this and I got, I think a model that is pretty darn workable, albeit I had to use almost an entire can of sublimating spray, but I got a model that is really, really workable. And I think I can print this in polycarbonate. Now, the areas where the scanner doesn't see, like inside these tiny little holes and in here, I am gonna have to clean up the model, but I also discovered in my YouTube tutorial deep dive that I can fix these models inside of the software much easier than I would have to fix them in Blender, and it keeps the model watertight or uh, manifold. So what do you guys say we try to print some of this stuff and see if it actually comes out half decent? Let's find out. Okay, that literally took like an hour and a half of painting and repainting, and it looks a little bit nightmarish, but that's about as detailed as I can get it uh, in Bamboo Studio. I do wanna see if I can get some of the settings uh, in such a way that I'm gonna save uh, on purged filament. Okay, new plan, friends. So it is now Wednesday afternoon, late afternoon, and not only has the X1 Carbon combo come with that extra AMS that I need, but also uh, I don't have four days to, even if I did have the AMS, I don't have four days to get this video edited and out for you all by Tuesday. So our new plan is to cut down the number of filaments to just eight, thereby cutting down the number of filament changes and cutting a full day off of the print. Now this is kind of a bummer because I really wanted to try out 12 colors, but I do think it is still gonna be an awesome multicolor print, so stick around for that.
while we wait for the next three days and 2,300 hopefully successful filament changes, I want to say that even if you do not have a Bamboo Lab printer with an AMS, that does not mean that you cannot do multicolor prints. And really, having multiple colors in your prints is one of the greatest ways to level up the quality and just how impressive it is overall. And the reason that you can do multicolor prints without having an AMS or a fancy material switching printer is in part thanks to today's sponsor, which is Sobel. Now, you all know about Sobel and their SVO7, SVO6, SVO6 Plus, because I've been recommending their super budget friendly printers for quite some time now, if you are looking for an entry level machine. But recently, Sobel also launched a line of amazing high quality filaments that not only come on cardboard spools, which you all know that I love, but also come in all kinds of different colors. You have a range of different rainbows with muted rainbow colors. You also have dual extrusions so that you can have multiple colors within the same layer. I love these filaments. My kids have been loving everything that I've been printing out with them, and they're super affordable, just like Sobel's amazing 3D printers. So to support Sobel and check out their amazing line of products, and in doing so, support this channel, visit the link in the description below. All right, let's go check up on that print, shall we? All right, friends, it's about four or five days later. I've honestly lost track of time because a lot has happened in the last few days. So let me try and catch you all up. As far as the multicolor statue goes, I ran into some serious issues, but it wasn't actually with the scan, which my friend Printed Obsession was kind enough to fix the actual physical repair. Originally, I was going to print it with 12 colors because Bamboo Lab was going to send over this X1 carbon combo, thank you very much, to support this video so that I would have three AMSs on the P1S, which I was using to print this. Unfortunately, I modified one of the AMSs to do the Hydra upgrade, and I think while doing that, I damaged one of the AMS feeder motors, which meant that one color needed to be manually fed periodically because sometimes it would catch the filament and other times it wouldn't. The practical effect of this was that I spent the entire weekend on my electric scooter going back and forth, trying to spend time with my kids, but also get the print going. As of right now, there's still 50 hours left on the print because I have a life. I needed to sleep at some point. Fortunately, my beloved wife gave me a genius idea which is, why not just print it out of one color? So I printed it out of this video's sponsor, Filament, Sovol, wonderful dual color filament. I repaid my wife for her wonderful idea by accidentally breaking her arm. But overall, I think this came out really, really well. It's pretty incredible the level of detail, even though I printed it at 0.2 millimeter height. I mean, this is passable for me in recreating that statue. But what about functional parts? Throughout the video, I've been scanning some functional parts, and we did see that, at least as a beginner with the software, I failed in doing this very complicated clasp. Maybe because I was a beginner, or maybe not. Fortunately, I also had this functional part, which you would think would be very difficult because it's clear, but with that awesome sublimating spray from ATT Blime, I actually got a really, really good scan. The inside wasn't perfect, so I had to modify this model and just cut a little bit. For the sake of time, I just printed a prototype to see if it was worth cleaning up the model and or re-scanning, which is probably what I would do. And I gotta admit, guys, this is a fully functional prototype. If I spent a little bit of time either re-scanning the underside and then merging that, or cleaning it up in Blender or the software that is provided, the JM Studio, which I have to admit, is significantly better than the version that Creality was shipping with theirs. I mean, that was the whole reason that I hated the CR Scan Lizard. This is the same software, but it has now tutorials. And most importantly, and I've said this again with different lasers and different products, they provide tutorial videos so that if I don't understand how to use the hardware, I can figure it out. So many times, it's not the hardware that is the problem. It's the, either the software or the actual training to get the most out of it. Anyway, this is functional, this works. I would happily use this over designing my own prototype in CAD and that's a big first for me. So this isn't a review, I haven't 
structure this as a review, but I do want to say a couple quick words about the 3D Maker Pro Mole and say that this is the first scanner I've used. The Revo Point Mini came very close, but it's the first scanner I've used where I've actually been able to replace designing a part in CAD with just scanning it. I think there's a learning curve here, and I think I'm going to learn a lot and get a lot better with this. But for my next repair project or fixing something around the house, I mean, I have some remote controls that I need to create brackets for because we lost them in the move to our new house. I'm just going to scan those remotes and then design around that. And that's a big first. Also, at $649, this is a way better deal than the CR Scan Lizard. So can I recommend it? I think it's expensive if you're a hobbyist. We're still not at the point where this is a must have for everyone. But if you do a lot of designing, this is a really great thing to have. It's going to save me a ton of time drawing things out in CAD because I am probably not as good at CAD of advanced designs as many of you are. So that's my thoughts on the 3D Maker Pro. As for that multicolor print, if you guys do want to see it, make sure you're subscribed and I will share it if and when it ever finishes on the community tab of the channel. Hey, I appreciate you guys watching this video. I super appreciate this video sponsor, Sobel, and the folks who sent me the products to actually do this project video, Bamboo Lab and 3D Maker Pro, as well as all of you if you're a Patreon supporter or